हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड कंक्लूडेड विद मॉड्यूल फोर दैट इज आई डिस्कस्ड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एनकोडिंग यूजिंग शिफ्ट रजिस्टर्स एंड बिल्डिंग द एनकोडिंग सर्किट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द ऑल द डेटा प्रोवाइडेड सो दैट वॉज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वीडियो आई होप यू गाइज हैव सीन दैट वीडियो एंड आई हैड कंक्लूडेड मॉड्यूल फोर विद दैट now i'm going to be starting with module 5 it is a very small module I'll, around 4 uh, to 5 videos in that i'm going to be covering this uh, whole module there are uh, not much concepts here but whichever concepts are there right all of them are very important okay all of them all of the concepts are sure shot questions in your final exam because there are only four four concepts in this there are only four topics in this uh, uh, module itself so if you compare compare it with the question paper in both the choices also these four topics they would be di dividing in each for 10 10 marks so that's why please please focus very well in this module all these four topics are very very easy okay easily you could be understanding it and easily you could be analyzing and solving the problems of this module most of them are getting having the complaints regarding this fourth and fifth module are very tough but i say if you listen to me very correctly and in this video if you listen to me very carefully easily you could be cracking all the concepts of this module so you should be listening to me having faith in me and don't skip any part of the video like this video before you watch it your like would be very very important to us please please each and every one of you like this video right now so now let us start with this module Module five. The name of the module is convolutional codes. Okay. So in this video, in this video, I'm going to be discussing with some basic parts which you need to be knowing for convolutional codes. Basically, what do you mean by convolutional code? Let us see. In a basic block of this convolutional code, a block of n code digits generated by an encoder in a unit time t not only depends on k messages but also the preceding m minus one block digits. so that is here the main thing is which is taking place in this convolution is encoding and decoding that would be depending on the previous values and the next state values that is done by using the shifting right so that's why that is very much dependent on the messages and the block digits okay so that is basically meant by convolution because uh, the operation convolution says the same thing that is convolution is happening between the present and next state input message sequences okay if you compare it with the linear convolution circular convolution everything is done in the same way so that is the basic definition of this convolutional code so this is the basic block here it consists of an unconvolutional encoder which is a combination of n k and m this is the general way to define a convolutional encoder or a convolutional code n comma k comma m okay i'll say i'll tell you what is that now here this is the block input blocks are message blocks and the output blocks generated are the code blocks which has the code rate that is cr means code rate and that is given by k divided by n okay so what do you mean by n k and m you see here in general this convolutional uh, code encoder is defined by the order of n k n comma k comma m where n stands for number of modulo 2 adders used in that convolutional encoder circuit k stands for number of bits entering at a time okay at a time how many bits are entering it may be one it may be two it may be n number of bits at a time how many bits are entering that circuit and how the shifting takes place that is k m is the number of flip flops or shift registers okay basically you could be calling them as shift registers why the name additionally flip flops they have given it given it because because it is used for bit reversal right flip flops so that's why if you have if you are having a single bit instead of shift registers easily you could be using flip flops to be uh, uh flipping the bits from 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 after the modulo modulo 2 addition so that's why the flip flops or shift registers any one of them you could be calling it and one more parameter is called as code rate code rate which is also called as cr it is given by the definition k by n okay with k and n i already told you what do you mean by that this is a general formula you need to be knowing because in the questions also they might not be giving you the order instead of the order they might be giving you the code rate with some values okay so for example if they give in the question the code rate as 1 by 2 you should be knowing that uh 2 corresponds to n and 1 corresponds to k so that's why 2 comma 1 comma m value whatever is there that like that you could be analyzing the code uh, the uh format okay so that's why please please remember the code rate because 
the in the question paper also in the model paper also in some of the questions they have given the order of the convolutional encoder in terms of code rate okay so that's why you need to be remembering remembering it okay yeah so this was the basic things now some more thing is you should be knowing is there are two ways to generate a convolutional code okay there are basically two ways in general one is called as time domain approach which is the normal multiplication you do uh, which is the normal multiplication you do in case of frequency not time okay whereas in time domain approach we you, you do we do the method of convolution okay because in the dsp part we have seen that in time domain we do the multiplication and in frequency domain we do the convolution right whereas in this case it is reverse that is in time domain we do the convolution and in frequency domain we do the multiplication normal multiplication okay so what do you mean by time domain and frequency domain approach let us see now okay there are some definitions and some formula list which you need to be knowing for solving problems also okay so let us see now first is time domain approach so in time domain approach there are some sets of impulse responses which they would be giving you while solving the problems let us see we'll, you will get a clarity on that but for the just for before that you need to be knowing what you do you mean by this time domain approach okay? So in time domain approach as I have told you impulse responses would be given and they are given in this order that is g to the power 1, g power 2 up to g power n. Okay, So this bracket indicates the power. So each of them is defined as g power 1 is defined by g1 power 1. It is a set of g1 power 1, g2 power 1 up to g of m plus 1 power 1. Same goes with g, g to the power 2 also and g to the power n also like this. The impulse response set is uh, given in case of time domain approach. Now, these impulse responses for, from the adders can be interleaved and arranged in the form of matrix with L rows and N into L plus M columns. Okay, so this, these are the, this is the order of the matrix with respect to this impulse response. That is, it consists of L rows and n into l plus m columns okay where this l corresponds to the message length that in the question how many bits message is there that would be corresponding to the value of l okay such a matrix of order l cross n into l plus m is called as the generator matrix of the convolutional code so whichever matrix is of this order that matrix is called as generator matrix and that generator matrix is used for the representing the convolutional code we have seen the generator matrices in the previous model also but that was different that was with respect to the error calculation right but here this generator matrix is used for representing the convolutional codes okay so here uh, some more clarity you would be getting while you solve the problems related to time domain approach okay that we'll see in the later stage so now let us see what is there under frequency domain approach okay so in the frequency domain approach, the procedure is for first step is for J number of modulo 2 adders, that is any number of modulo 2 adders, the generator polynomial is given by this equation. Okay. Uh, in order to be calculating the standard generator polynomial based on the sequences G1, G2, whatever they give, you could be should be calculating the standard generator polynomial G of X, that is G power J of X. So where J represents the number of modulo 2 adders, and that in general it is given by g1 of j g1 power j plus x into g2 power j plus x square into g3 power j it goes on up to x to the power m into g to the power m plus 1 power j okay while seeing this you have got an idea that in frequency domain approach you should be representing the generators in terms of polynomials because they have given x x square x cube like that and the coefficients you should be considering and calculating the uh, bit sequences you should be assigning the bits based on the coefficients okay so this is the first step second step the output of modulo to adder is given by this equation that is c of x power j c j of uh, c power j of x is given by d of x into g of x to the power j where j corresponds to number of modulo to adders again how many number of modulo to adders are there that many number of c of x values you would be getting that after that based on whatever the number of modulo 2 adders and whatever answer we get here sets of answer we get that you should be combining together and finding the final output of the out convolutional encoder in frequency domain that is given by this equation that is c of x not cj of x only c of x c of x is the total output of the 
or the final output of the convolutional encoder that is given by this equation that is c to the power 1 x to the power n into x to the power n c to the power 1 of x to the power n plus x into c square of x to the power n this is x to the power n okay plus x square c cube of x to the power n and it goes on okay this is the general output equation so these things whatever we have discussed those things let us try to analyze and uh, let us try to put these things in some problems and uh, uh, give you one clarity about how the problem should be approached how they, how, the, how they would be asking problems in the exams okay so let us see those problems in the upcoming videos so that's all for this video guys thank you